major, and I am one of the co-directors of admission here at George School. Welcome to our summer first look, our summer open house event. Um, I'm going to make a quick housekeeping announcement to let you know that we will be recording this session. We have some friends in Europe who have asked us to record the session because it is just too late for them to stay up, as you'll hear from one of our students in a moment. Uh, and, and so if you prefer not to be on, on record, please make sure that you turn your video off. And please also make sure that your microphone is muted. That will allow us to make sure that we can hear each other as we speak. So I've introduced myself as a co-director of admission. I also want to let you know that I'm an advisor. I'm a dorm parent. And I always consider my most important role here at George School as the parent of a George School student. And I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Rohan, who will introduce himself, and then we'll introduce the rest of the panelists. Good evening and welcome, friends. My name is Rohan Arjun, and I am the other co-director of admission at George School and also a proud alum. I also serve as an advisor and a co-sponsor for Yemoja, which is our student of color affinity space on campus. So thank you again for joining us, and we hope that you enjoy your time with us. We have two, uh, three, excuse me, three other admission team members that are behind the scenes. They're gonna help monitor the, the chat and the question and answer. Mike Murray is giving you a virtual wave as is Colby Langweller and, and Deb Soufleris. I'm sure you'll meet them through the admission process, but I just wanted to let you know that they are there. Final reminder that we will, oh, we are recording. So we, we are saving this for posterity. Um, I'd like to now turn over to our faculty panelists and ask them to introduce themselves and we're going to start with Polly. Good evening everybody and uh, so excited to see you virtually here at George School. My name is Polly Lodge. I teach chemistry and international baccalaureate biology. I have coached girls soccer and girls lacrosse. I've been crazy teaching for more than three decades. So I've been here for a long time. I have led uh, several international uh, service learning trips. And actually both my boys graduated from George School. So I've had the parent experience as well. Thank you, Polly. Kim, can I ask you to introduce yourself? Hi everybody, my name is Kim McGlynn. I'm the IB coordinator and I'm also an English teacher. I teach HL World Literature. I've also taught the standard level world literature class and the American literature world class, um, world literature class for juniors. Um, I'm an advisor currently and I've coached for many years. I was in the dorm for many years. Um, my husband also teaches here. So we live on campus and we're, our whole family is part of the George Hall community. Um, and I'm going into my 15th year here. So. Thank you for being here, Kim. Ilya Beth? Hi, everybody. My name is Ilya Beth Ayala, and I'm starting my ninth year here at George School. It's crazy to believe that I've been here for nine years. Um, but yes, I teach Spanish, and um, I'm originally a French major turned into Spanish teacher, um, originally from Puerto Rico. Um, so I've been teaching languages for about 12 years um, and loving it. Um, George School has become my home. We live in a small dorm called uh, Brown House, where we typically have juniors uh, in our dorm. Um, I'm an advisor. I'm also the sponsor of the Lasso Affinity Group, which is a Latinx um, affinity group on campus. Um, and I think that's all I do. But I'm not sure. Maybe I do something else I forgot. And my husband also teaches here. So. I was say, is that all, Elizabeth? I think <laughs> that's <Okay>. enough. <laughs> and last but not least, our faculty panelists, we're going to ask Hamilton to introduce himself. Hi, my name is Hamilton Davis. Uh, I'm a, a math teacher here. So I teach all sorts of things, algebra, geometry, um, like calculus. So next year, it's uh, AP calculus. I've done IB calculus uh, and um, also further math, sort of a post-calculus class. Um, I, I've been a dorm parent. I am a swim coach. I've led service trips. Ilya has also led service trips. Um, uh, I have two little boys and another one coming in like a week. So it's, it's this worked out time-wise great to, to be able to be here. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, love it here. It's a wonderful, wonderful environment. Thank you. 
And now we want to turn it out over to what I'm going to anticipate or always, because it's always the case, the stars of the show. That's girl who was at the, I'm, I'm going to ask the, everybody to quickly cool. mute themselves if you're not speaking. Thank you. And I'm going to start off and ask Sarah to introduce. Hi, everyone. My name's Sarah. I'm a rising senior day student, which is crazy to think. Um, I'm really involved in the theater program here, whether that's the classes or the productions. I'm really involved with the science programs here. I'm part of the steering committee. I've been doing tour guiding for three years now. Um, I'm part of the student inclusion committee and I'm part of many clubs. So please feel free to ask any questions. Thank you, Sarah. Ben, can I ask you to introduce yourself? Hi everybody, I'm Ben. I'm from Turnersville, New Jersey. I'm a boarding student, uh, class of 21. Uh, I lead George School's podcast club and I'm also an IB diploma candidate, which I'm sure we'll be talking about a little bit later. And I'm excited to answer any questions you guys have and really happy to be here. So thanks. Thank you, Ben. Martin, you're up next. Hi, I'm Martin. I'm a rising senior boarder and I'm from Philadelphia, PA, and I'm affiliated with the track team, football, painting and drawing, diversity and inclusion, and I'm becoming at Wharton Prefect this year. I need to unmute myself. Thank you, Martin. Sophia, joining us from a distance. Did Sophia get kicked off? Get, Hi, get... everyone. Um, oh, there we I'm are, Sophia. Sophia. I'm involved. I'm here. I'm sorry. I a little stable. Sophia, I'm it Sophia. looks like you're... Internet yeah. connection. So, I'm so sorry, Sophia. It looks like your internet connection is a little bit off. Can I ask you to log off and log back in, and maybe that'll work because it, it was very, very jumpy, and I want to make sure that our friends can hear us. And Rohan will let you in, and he'll let me know, and we'll make sure that we introduce. So we'll wrap up introductions right now with Shelby. Hi, everyone. My name is Shelby Williams. I am a rising senior day student from Trenton, New Jersey. And I wear many hats within the George School community. I've been an admissions tour guide since my sophomore year. I founded a public speaking club in my junior year. I serve on student council. I'm a day student prefect. I previously served as a peer group leader. Um, I'm a member of the varsity cheerleading and lacrosse teams. And I write for the student newspaper. I'm exhausted already. And you haven't even started your senior year in the college process. <laughs> Uh, so today, what we would like to do is, is to give you a very brief overview of George School. If you received our email this morning, you may, have, you may have had a chance to view what we call our brief information session. It's a quick video, Introduction to George School. If you haven't had a chance to view that, I'm going to give you the really quick bullet points to make sure that you have the basics about George School. But really, we want to reserve the next 40 minutes really for, for students and faculty to share their experience at George School and to turn it over to you to ask questions of our panelists. And I see that a question has already come in, so I've jotted it down and we'll make sure that we get to it, uh, which leads me to the chat. If you have questions, from what you've already viewed in the information session or from what you're hearing today or just some of the burning questions that you have about George School, please put those questions into the chat. We will get to as many of those as we can. Colby and Mike and Deb may have, may have the opportunity to answer some of those individually and they've already put our admission email address. You can always email any follow-up questions to us. We'll answer some or we'll forward them to the appropriate, to the appropriate parties to answer those. So I'm going to start with a very quick overview of George School, as we call it the little elevator pitch. If you're meeting somebody in an elevator and somebody said, what's George School all about? This is what I would say. Um, George School is a co-educational boarding and day school for students in grades 9 through 12. As you may know, we're located in Newtown, Pennsylvania, which is about 45 minutes from Philadelphia. It's about two hours from New York City, three hours from Washington, D.C., easy to access all around the world because we are easily accessible by three major international airports. Bonus. Um, we are in a suburban setting, which is safe, it is open, it is airy, it is green, but you're not in the middle of nowhere. Directly across the street is a local grocery store, pharmacy, restaurants, a short walk downtown uh, takes you to ice cream parlors and restaurants and shops. And on the weekends, George School provides access to 
uh, to shopping, to restaurants, to activities in Philadelphia and beyond. So you'll have access to everything that you need here at Newtown, but still feel like you're on a green, quiet, safe uh, campus. Uh, one of the things that we pride ourselves on at George School is being an incredibly diverse, open, and inclusive campus. Uh, we, this past year, we had students from 17 different states and 47 different countries all across the world. Uh, approximately 30% of our students are international, and we pride ourselves on making sure that our student body is diverse in terms of gender, religion, race, ethnicity, interests, socioeconomic status, and more. Um, we are a Quaker school. Quakerism is a religion. Uh, does that mean you have to be a Quaker? Absolutely not. Only about 10% of our students and faculty are Quakers. But as a Quaker school, we focus on the core principles of simplicity, peace, integrity, community, equality, service, and stewardship. And I'm not going to go into all of those. Of course, if you have questions, we we encourage you to ask our students and our faculty, but what it really means to you as a student, being at a friend school means that this is a place where we strive to allow everybody to be their authentic self, where you can be who you are, where you strive to get to know everybody around you for who they are, where you can learn through difference, where you can be open to accepting different points of view, and, and that we focus on, on truth, we focus on honesty, we focus on respect. Bottom line, it's a place that is full of kindness. It's a place where, where people look out for one another. And it's a place where you can embrace, embrace difference, embrace questioning, and, and know that you're in a safe environment. Our curriculum is diverse. We offer traditional courses that you would, you would find anywhere, what you would consider regular courses. Um, also at the intensive level, we offer a, a, an array of advanced placement or AP courses, and we are one of the few boarding schools in the United States to offer the International Baccalaureate or IB curriculum. And you may have questions about those. I'm sure Kim will share some information before. What that means for you, it means that you have an incredibly diverse array of courses, that it's unlikely that two students graduate from George School ever taking the exact same array of courses. Uh, students can, can make sure that they have the right breadth of, of, of coursework to make sure that they are prepared for their next step in higher education, but they can also go deep into a particular area and they can take courses at the appropriate level of challenge for them. Um, I want to take a pause because I see Sophia has come back and I wanna, I'm, I'm hopeful that Sophia's audio is better and she can introduce herself quickly. So, you, oh, there you are. Can you hear me, Sophia? Yeah, I can hear you. I'm not sure if you could hear me. Now we can. Do you want to do a quick introduction? I'm Unfortunately, it looks like Sophia from a distance is having um, having some challenges. Sophia is actually in Europe right now where it is approximately 2.15 in the morning and it looks like uh, Wi-Fi is, is out a little bit. So we're going to have Sophia hold, but we want to make sure that you can hear her. So Sophia, if there are questions that are related to, to being international, maybe we can have you answer in, um, in the chat, okay? Uh, so, last thing I want to say about George School as we go back to that basic information session is that you're going to find an incredible balance between academics, between athletic offerings, the arts, those are critically important to George School. You'll have lots of choice within all of those and, and you will, will gain great balance between the, the academics, the athletics, the, creativity, the creative sides of yourself. So those are the very basics, those are the, the key bullet points about George School. But I could sit and rattle on and give you facts and figures for an hour. What we really want is to give students and faculty the opportunity to tell you about George School from their perspective. So I'm going to start by asking Shelby, now that you're a senior, I'm hoping that you will reflect back. Think back to where you were four years ago when you were going through this process for yourself. And think about where you were at that point 
and where you are now and how George School has been part of, of helping you grow in the process. Certainly. So I remember I had always been interested in George School. Um, I used to go to Newtown Friends School, which is right next door. It's um, a lower in elementary school, and I attended for kindergarten and first grade. And so I had some neighbors who had um, been George School students too, so I had heard about the school my whole life. But I remember requesting a summer tour just because I was so excited about learning about campus. Um, and that was the summer before my freshman year. So I was this scared little 12 year old walking around a high school campus and I was like, mom, it's 245 acres. That's like 245 acres for me to get lost on. Um, and I was super intimidated, but you know, as I approached high school and I began um, in my freshman year of uh, George School in the fall of 2017, I really just grew to love the place and you know I met so many incredible people and I've just had so many opportunities there to kind of grow and stretch myself and develop into the person that I am today. Thank you so much Shelby. Sophia, I'm going to ask you to type the, your, your same answer into the chat so that our, our friends participating can hear your perspective. I want to make sure that everybody can hear you so I'm going to ask you to type that. And I'm going to turn to Martin, and I'm going to ask Martin that same question, to reflect back on where you were in, in your process when you were considering George School and where you are now, and, and how you feel you've grown here at the school. Um, before I came to George School, I was coming from the inner city, and I was part of A, a Better Chance, which is like a, um, a scholarship program. So I was like going to a lot of different boarding schools and day schools. And like a lot of the schools, they fit like a, they feel like a certain mold, like everyone acted the same. I didn't really appreciate that. But then when I came to George School, I met so many different people. And it was just like, you're able to grow and be who you, who you want to be. So like, that's one of the reasons why I chose George School. And also like, it just like looked like a school out of like high school music school or something. Like it was just like unreal for me. So that's why I chose George School. And then like now, I feel like I'm more confident, I'm more level-headed and open-minded because I've learned so much and I have like a global perspective of the world. So, yeah. Thank you, Martin. Ben, your turn. All right. Um, during my high school application process, I applied to around 10 schools. So I definitely had plenty of options. And I came from a small Quaker school um, for 10 years. Um, so I definitely wanted to continue my education in a Quaker setting. And I, as soon as I visited George School, I knew that it was the right place just because uh, the campus and the kids that I saw. Uh, and I knew that George School would be a place where I can challenge myself academically, but also socially, which was very important for me. Thank you, Ben. Sarah? Yeah, I kind of a similar um, situation to Ben. Um, I went to Buckingham Friends School before then. If you know it, I um, grew up with 10 different kids, you know, like for one of the eight years. So it was, you know, it was a big change for me, you know, having a lot more students. We have a lot more than 10 students. Um, so I was really, really nervous at the beginning. Um, but over the years, I've really loved, um, loved George School and everything about it. Um, I've been able to really express myself, whether that's in the arts, whether that's in science. Um, and I've been able to really create these wonderful um, relationships with all the teachers and really pursue my passions at George School. Sarah, it's like you queued up that seg because I want to turn to our faculty and, and ask our faculty to, to all answer the same question. You've all been here for, for a number of years and taught for and, and, and choose every year to continue to teach at George School. So I'm curious, what makes teaching at George School special? What makes that relationship uh, between students and faculty special that keeps you teaching here at George School for so long? We will start with Hamilton this time. We're going to go in reverse order. And students are fabulous, I have to tell you. Like they, the schools who just spoke sort of are, you know, they're, they're wonderful. And, uh, you know, the curious, interested, engaged, kind of driven, uh, it's, there's, there are multiple points where like I as a teacher can interact with students when I was in the dorm, there'd be debates about this and that, and that was always exciting. And when I drive vans, I overhear like intriguing conversations of all sorts. And uh, so, I mean, the, it's, it's a place where 
I can see, like I typically I've taught lots of freshmen and seniors. And so it's an interesting uh, kind of juxtaposition. You see the freshmen come in sort of smaller and kind of timid and curious, bright eyed and bushy tailed. And then you see them develop and grow in confidence and their voice comes out. And it's just, it's a, I, I mean, I, I, the growth that students experience here is marvelous to behold. Uh, and I, it's thrilling for me to be a part of it. Um, I think it's a really special place um, for that sort of you know, personal, intellectual, even spiritual development. And so there, there's a lot that happens um, at our school, um, which is you know, keeps me coming back. So it's wonderful. Thanks, Hamilton. Ilya Beth, can I ask you, what keeps you teaching here? Uh, year after year with such enthusiasm. Um, absolutely. Um, I, before teaching at, uh, at George Pool, I had been teaching at language programs that were, where I felt like language learning was an afterthought or something students um, selected as an elective. Um, and I really wanted to be part of something greater um, and a, a language program where students were genuinely interested in expanding their horizons and opening and, and how languages were going to open up doors for them and being proficient in these languages. And so when I um, interviewed at George School, I saw the potential of being a part of, of, of a department that did that. Um, and I have loved my years here and I've grown so much as a teacher as a part of it. But part of the, the deep growth that I've had as, a, as an educator has been the students, like Hamilton said. I've learned so much from the students. Um, I was very intrigued when I, when I came in the first time of teaching such a diverse group of students from all over the world. I've learned so much as a person and um, we learn so much from each other in the classroom just because of the dynamics and the backgrounds of everybody in the classroom. So I, it's been such a treat for me to be a part of, um, of this experience and, and, and learn so much and grow so much out of it. Um, another thing that that really interested me was as I started being an IB teacher was um, delving more into what uh, the IB student profile and what, what an IB student, um, what we're, we're supposed to do in the classroom in an IB, um, in an IB curriculum. Um, and all of that resonated to, with me so much as an educator, um, caring, principled, inquirers, thinkers, open-minded, communicators, um, so that to me made me want to um, challenge my students even more and, and it's been a great experience so far. Thanks, Ilya Beth. It's like we planned this because that's a great segue to Kim, who's the IB coordinator, who I'm going to ask to answer that same question, but also perhaps for our friends who might not be as familiar with what the International Baccalaureate is, to do a, a quick intro to what the IB is so that everybody's speaking the same language. Sure. So the International Baccalaureate is essentially a nonprofit international organization that offers a range of globally recognized educational programs. And so in the case of George School, we offer the Diploma Program, which is a program for students aged 16 through 19, or essentially the junior and senior years. And it's a very academically challenging two-year course sequence. Um, the curriculum is globally tested. Uh, it's really about um, process and those skills that um, I was so happy to hear Ilya Beth talk about those, the learner profile traits, being an inquirer, a communicator, being reflective, balanced. Um, and those traits and aspects of character are really all the traits that we encourage as George School students or in George School students. And so, you know, when Kim asks what drew me to George School and what keeps me at George School, it's seeing all those traits in our students. I absolutely echo Hamilton and Iliabeth. The students are the best part of my job, always. Um, always, they're, they're, they're wonderful. And I think beyond the fact that they're caring and they're smart and they're inquisitive, um, what I love about George School is that there's, there's really a place for all students. Everybody has a niche, it seems to me. And I, that, that's different than my own high school experience. It's different than other high schools that I've taught at. Um, and I find as a teacher too, um, as I've gone through different stages in my life, there's, there's always a place in the George School community for me too, and for other teachers, regardless of where we are. 
Um, and as we go through those different stages, we get to see different aspects of the students' lives, which I think is really wonderful. I get to see students in the classroom. When I was in the dorm, I got to see them in the dorm for lots of fun, <laughs> fun times. I have great memories from the dorm. Um, you know, I got to see them on the playing field. Um, I get to work with them um, as the IB coordinator. So um, Sarah and Ben and Sophia are all IB candidates, which, um, you know, it's really exciting to see them here. And then Shelby is my wonderful advisee. Um, and so just having those kinds of relationships is really, um, it's really meaningful on a personal level, not just a professional one. I mean, even earlier today, Shelby texted me and said, hey, I'm speaking at a leadership conference. So, you know, a big shout out to Shelby. But those are the kinds of little moments that really, um, I think, really keep me here and keep me excited about this place. Thanks, Kim. And Polly, can we hear from you? Sure, and I think, <clears throat> I think my colleagues have touched on the topics that I would have initially spoken about, the students, um, the IB program, and, and I'm really grateful that Kim mentioned that the qualities of an IB learner are very much in sync with uh, George School's mission and George School's philosophy. So those, those qualities we don't look for just in our IB students, but in all of our students. Um, I think George School takes a very holistic approach uh, to educating young people, whether it's their spirit, their emotional needs, their intellectual needs, their physical needs, and, and that resonates for me that we take that holistic approach. But I'll take this opportunity just to talk about, um, I really love uh, the faculty, right? They're really passionate, they're uh, super well-educated and really com committed to their their craft of teaching and education. Uh, so we, <clears throat> at the lunch table, we have lots of conversation about pedagogy and people who do really interesting uh, professional development opportunities. Uh, I feel like as a teacher, I have a lot of autonomy in the classroom so I can really teach to my passions. Uh, but yet we, we still uh, hold ourselves accountable to, to teaching the basics. So, you know, kids have to learn chemistry and biology. Um, you know, I'll speak to science, but um, I just feel like we have a really rigorous academic uh, program at the school and, and we're committed to upholding that. Um, so it's a great place to teach. It's a great place to learn and it's a great place to live really. It's a, it's a wonderful community. And that actually is a nice lead up to, to the next question that I'd like to pose to the group. And I'm hoping that maybe a couple of students will raise their hand to, to answer and, and perhaps a couple of faculty members. We could sit here and tell you about all of the amazing achievements that all of our students have made and, and the students here and other students. And, and they're all true and they all should be celebrated. But I really think that sometimes one of the best ways to gauge your fit with a school is, is what happens when the times are difficult. And what happens when things are, are not easy, well, not easy when, you, when you maybe fail? What has happened for so those students, for to, first to the students? Can, you, can someone share an experience where things didn't go as planned and or that you needed to lean on a teacher or a peer or a coach to help you through? And, and tell us about that experience and tell us about the support that you received for, for faculty I'm wondering if, if you might have an experience that you have from either a teaching, a dorm parent, an advisor, a coach perspective, where you can share how you've been there for students in their times of, of struggle. All right, Shelby. Hi guys, Shelby here. So I'm really into social sciences and history. So my course load has typically been pretty rigorous on that side. Um, but I've also taken some really challenging math courses. And math isn't always, um, or hasn't always been my forte. And so I did struggle at points with, um, you know, my different math courses, but I've really found it helpful to, you know, reach out to my teachers, send them a quick email. Um, and we have these things at George School called consultations. And so with that, you know, I've been able to have one-on-one -on -one meetings with my teachers so they can really walk me through the course material that maybe I'm not, you know, completely retaining during that class period. But then there are also so many students within our community who are really just eager to help you out. I mean, my cheer captain was really good at math. So she would FaceTime me sometimes at night and she just helped me go over math problems. And so 
that's something that's really special about Georgeville. You just have such a great community of people who really want to help. You. Thank you, Shelby. Is there someone else, either a faculty member or another student who wants to talk about? Oh, Martin, go for it. Um, I didn't really have any challenges academically, but most of my challenges have been like in the dorm because like you go through a lot of stuff like homesickness and just like normal stuff. And I remember this one time I was sick in the middle of the night and it was like 12 o'clock and then like I wasn't going to go to the health center because it was late. But my prefect, he checked on me and he took me to the health center. So like that's one thing I do appreciate, appreciate about George School that they're supportive people in like every facet, even within the dorm among students. So an example how George Lisbon's. And I know Sarah wants to add to that too. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I Something at the time I really struggled was during tech week, which for anybody who doesn't know what that is, that's when during the theater productions, the last week we get put everything together. It's some late nights, but it's really fun. Um, and I was really struggling with my course load at that point because it was just a lot of work and doing that as well. And something that really helped me was, I guess, two things. First of all, was my advisor, Nancy Kirby, who was always there for me. Um, like Kim said to about Shelby, like we were able to text each other. She was always calling on me, making sure I'm doing well. And also the services that are provided um, in the library, such as math help or um, writing help, which I used a lot um, to help me um, finish a few different assignments and help look over a few of them. So I definitely, um, when you come to George School, I definitely recommend the different services that we provide because they, they're extraordinary and the teachers really want to help you succeed. Thank you, Sarah. Do any teachers or want to, to share their perspective on, on helping students through challenging times? I, have, I, mean, we, no. I guess we have, uh, the, there's a component during the weekly schedule called collection. And it's a sort of a time where our advisees come into our rooms and it's kind of like a little a little bit of a break so you could bring donuts or that's sort of something i like to bring donuts some people bring pancakes um little bits of candy just sort of and just chat maybe do a crossword puzzle together um be silly i, I know kim has them like dancing and doing sort of so there are all sorts of things but anyway but it's it's a time where you know if if sort of in in my experience as an advisor student has like issues in one of their classes like oh I'm, I'm having difficulty um you know participating like how can I do it and so um, usually it's you know the freshman or sophomore has the question and then junior or senior will say well you know I in my experience you know I, I try and you know think about something oh someone so if someone says this then I can you know maybe riff off of that so there's They'll give, the students can help each other just sort of being put into the contact. It's sort of, in a way, we're, you know, we, we know a lot about what's going on in, in students' lives. And so if stuff comes up, we as advisors are there to help you know, connect students with you know, other teachers or, like Sarah said, math help or writing center in the library, maybe with a tutor for academic issues. But yeah, I mean, we're, the advisor is sort of for for boarding students can not not a parent but like sort of a a trusted adult that that um you know a student can come to um in times of need and same for with prefects also serve a bit of that that role as well and that's what martin's going to be next year and some others so there'll be you know someone that perhaps you know a freshman might might lean on um and i that's that prefect student relationship where you know the seniors who know and have been there, uh, that's been really, I think, useful for some of my advisees. They really develop strong relationships with their prefects who help them um, in ways that, like, as teachers, we're not we don't really know as much about, but that are you know, really important social, personal stuff. So that leads to a question that I can tell you. I think every student that I have met in the interview or the admission process in all the years I've been at admission has, and only some are willing to ask it. So I'm gonna ask it for you. How easy is it to make friends here at George School? How am I going, if, if, I, was a, if I was a student inquiring, would I find people to connect with? Would I, and how does that happen? 
So I want to I want to ask a student first, and and that leads into something that I mean Hamilton kind of alluded to that with prefects, but I'd love to hear a student perspective on what it was like to to come here and and make those social connections. Martin. Um, but before coming to George School, I was very like I had, like walls up, so I wasn't very open to people talking to me and stuff like that. But like. When I first came to George School, I, like, made friends with, like, every person I met. Even if I don't, like, talk to them as often, like, you're going to be friends with a lot of people. And it's, like, it gets overwhelming sometimes. But it's, like, very easy to make friends because you connect with people so easily, whether it be um, sports or people in your classes or just, like, living in a dorm. It's probably where you, like, get a lot of your connections. So, yeah, it's very easy to make friends. And I, I think I, I can see, like, no one's pretty lonely. Like, no, you won't find anyone lonely. Like you always find someone with someone else. So, yeah. Sarah, do you want to add from a day student perspective? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I have friends from all different places. That's you know, I can have that from collection, from theater. There's always an opportunity. There's there's no limit to opportunities to make friends with people. I have a lot of friends without our borders. Um, and you know, especially a good example is during um, lunch. You know, if somebody sit, is sitting there, usually just a group of people just join. Even though you may not have classes together, you'll, you'll never sit alone. There's always people there. Um, so, yeah, definitely there's many, many opportunities to create friends at George School. Thank you all. All right, so I want to start uh, bringing up some of the questions that are coming in from the group. And I'm going to encourage you to read that chat because Sophia is is sharing some of her perspective about what it was like to to make friends here at george school please post your questions to the chat but i want to let you know that we already have we have um one question that came in and that i think will be a fun one to answer and we'll start with some of the faculty question came up tell us more about these service trips that that everyone's talked about um and Ilya beth i'm going to start with you on that just because i saw you first oh, okay <laughs> sure um the service trips are, are a key aspect of what, what we do at George School. And in terms of languages, um, we've always felt in the language department that service trips and language trips uh, validate the course, right? That we're not teaching a language that's in a book. We're teaching a language that many people speak and you, you, we can go see it for ourselves and experience um, and make connections with people. Um, so in my years here at George School, I've been a part of the Nicaragua service trip, uh, Costa Rica, um, Cuba, and France. And um, all of the, I'm particularly close to the Cuba program, and all of those have been a big part of why I keep uh, um, coming back to George School, because um, there are great connections that we've built uh, with these people in, in, uh, in all these different countries. Um, students get to know, um, in particular, certain, certain um, of the programs are community-based, so they get to know people there and um, experience what life is like as a teenager in those places, and I think that's very eye-opening um, for a high school student in, in the United States to go see what, it, what a high school student does in another part of the world. Um, and so, those have, been, those have been my experiences with, um, with the service trips here at George Bull. I don't know, I, I know Polly has been a big part of them too, so I, I'm sure she, she want to sh share something too. Thank you, Elizabeth. Um, you know, I'm not a language person, but uh, I do find that traveling is a great way to just be educated about the world, to understand my own culture, to understand my own privilege, to understand my own government. Um, traveling around the world uh, just opens my eyes. And I love having that opportunity with teenagers. Um, so uh, I've gone to places of conflict like Israel, Palestine. We've taken trips there, uh, Vietnam. I think we were the first high school to uh, do homestays in Vietnam to Russia when we had a Russian language program here. Um, and the Middle East and Africa have a special place in my heart. I'm not sure why, but uh, I've done trips to Ghana, Rwanda, um, Uganda. 
Uh, I did sabbatical in Kenya. So um, I'll take kids anywhere, really. <laughs> I know our, many of our uh, students may have been signed up for service trips over the summer. As you can imagine, during COVID-19, we've had to postpone or cancel our trips for this year. Just on a, on a flyer, have any of our students gotten a chance to do a service trip yet? Nah, I didn't think so. Um, so we can't get the student perspective, but look online, you'll find lots of, of perspectives. And we encourage you to also go to the George School blog, George School Voices. There are vlogs and blogs from our service trips where you can get that real life experience in that blog. So really great resource. So we have a question that I would like to pose to, let's start with students and, and raise your hand or just unmute yourself if you want to, to answer. The question about what the George School dress code is like. Hi, so I can take this from a student council perspective. Um, I know that it has evolved over the years, but to my understanding, we don't have a very strict dress code if it exists at all. Um, I mean, everyone dresses decently, obviously, but you know, it's pretty open-ended and I just feel that it's very inclusive of different body types and genders and races, just so you know, everyone can express themselves in the way that they feel um, is suitable. From a practical point, what I always say in the admission office, it's a pretty relaxed dress code. Your essential body parts need to be covered. You can't wear things that promote hate um, or, or things that promote things that we don't want to promote like drugs or alcohol, but you can be yourself. And, and that's important to us at, at George Gold. We also want you to be comfortable. That's really important to us as a, as a school community as well. So a question has come for students. Uh, and, and that is, Basically, what is it like to, to be at a Quaker school? What keeps you at a Quaker school? What might make the, the friend school experience different than an experience you might have had in your education before? Sarah, can I, oh, I see Mar Martin, you raised your hand first and then maybe I'll turn uh, to, uh, to Ben after that. Um, what's different is that we call teachers by our first name, which sounds weird at first, but you get used to it. and like even like the classroom setup, the classrooms aren't like in rows, they're in like a circle or like a round shape because we do like a lot of discussions in class. We just don't, like we do textbook reading and stuff like that, but we also like discuss what we learn and stuff like that. Yeah. And yeah, sure. So just piggy off, piggybacking off of Martin from an actual like um, Quaker school uh, point of view, I guess. Uh, since I've been going to Quaker school for a pretty long time, I'm pretty used to it by now, but every Thursday and Tuesday, we have meeting for worship, which is in our meeting house, which is the Quaker place of worship. And it's led by one of our teachers, Tom Hoops. And he's very, um, uh, he's, he's a big part of our community. You'll always see him around doing a, uh, uh, coaching lacrosse or being a dorm head, uh, but he's also our leader of the meeting house. And one interesting part about Quakerism is that it's pretty loose. And by that, I mean, it, it's not very demanding on the students or the faculty members. Um, it's more of a place where we can just come together as a community and share and decompress and really just become more whole um, as a group. And over the years, I've come to really love uh, the Quakerism um, beliefs. And I feel like it pairs really nicely with the school atmosphere as well. Do any faculty members want to add from a teaching perspective, what makes teaching at a friend's school different than any, than any other experience that you may have had? Well, I can say, um, Coming from a Spanish-speaking country, uh, the first name basis was very uh, different for me. Um, so as Martin says, you get used to it. And now I could never imagine students calling me Mrs. Ayala. I, I would feel it like it's so weird. Um, yeah, th this is who I am as a teacher now. Um, and so I love also the, the lack of um, hierarchy in between, you know, students or, or committees or things like that. Like there's, 
that that um core value of equality is seen in the way we interact with each other and i and i love it a lot thank you we've had some questions about george school traditions are there traditions that are specific to george school uh, and and does somebody want to comment on it? I'm seeing Shelby shaking her head yes, so I'm gonna I'm gonna look to Shelby first here. So every weekend at George School has a different theme on campus, um, and a lot of the different student groups on um, campus, and you know some of the different organizations, and just like even the houses, um, the dorms get to host different activities. So I'm a little biased, but I think that Student Council Weekend is the best weekend on campus. Um, we have a lot of fun traditions on. Um, over the course of those few days, like we have a massive water balloon fight. Um, we have like a, a really big water slide. If you've been to campus, you know that there is South Lawn right in front of um, our admissions building. And so you can slide down that, that's super fun. Um, and we have holy powder throwing. So it's just a really good um, communal bonding event that I love. Anyone, oh, Martin again, here we go. Yeah, there's other traditions too. Like we have the holiday meeting for worship, which is like a special meeting for worship where we have like desserts and we have singing performances and stuff like that. And there's a lot of other traditions. We also do like, um, we do a musical, a winter musical every year. We have the two plays um, and we do like a lot, of, we do dance eclectic. Like there's a lot of traditions that I, like, I can't name up because there's so many at George School, but yeah. Polly. Yeah, I think the, the pinnacle of my career at George School was coaching the girls JV lacrosse team against our rival school. Our rival school is a Quaker boarding school that shall not be named on the other side of Philadelphia. <laughs> and um, we have a competition with them every year uh, based on uh, wins for each varsity and JV competition. And uh, when the girls varsity team finished playing, it was tie between the two schools. It was something like 12-12. Uh, you know, they had won 12 games. I, I, don't, I don't remember the exact number, but um, so it came down to the game that I was coaching. And about, I, I swear, I, I think about half the school was down on the field cheering. And uh, we, we beat that school, that which shall not be named. Uh, we beat them in the last 30 seconds by one point, and it, it was thrilling. So uh, this competition that we have, this athletic rivalry that we have um, is really fun. Uh, I would also mention Art for Relief, I feel like is a tradition that's, um, it's, um, uh, it's a student club that raises money for a charity that they identify each year. Um, and they have an auction of art, and then they have a performance uh, and people make donations. So I really look forward to that one. And the last one I would say that I think is kind of cheesy, but I love it, is on Valentine's Day, people can order Valentines for their advisees or their friends or their sweetheart or their, you know, for anybody. Um, and then they can get delivered. And so students on student council run around the school in pink leotards and fun music and they deliver carnations. And I just, I, so I know some people don't like it, but I love it. So I just pointed that one out. <clears throat> I do too, Polly, and it brightens my day because sometimes advisees who might sometimes give me a tough time, all of a sudden I'll get like a beautiful note with a flower. And you're like, wow, where'd that come from? And, and it's always a nice way to share. Um, I wanna take a pause for a minute to let everybody know that right toward the end of the session, we're gonna provide some, some information about the admission process in the era of COVID. So I promise that we will address those questions. But I did see a question come in, a couple of questions about extracurricular activities and how soon somebody can get involved. I also had a question um, from somebody who's passionate about science and mathematics and wanting to know if there are clubs and activities that are related to, to science and mathematics. So two parts, um, science math clubs and, and how to be involved outside of the classroom and how soon to be involved with extracurriculars. Hamilton. Yeah, I can, I can answer that. So I, I put a little bit in the chat, um, but yeah, you can, you can be involved in extracurriculars like from Basically, day one, there's a there's a there's a club fair where students can go and uh, they'll student club leaders will have assembled some you know stuff to talk about all of their different clubs, so many different types of clubs of all 
types. There's a poetry and literature, magazine, uh, newspaper, um, language clubs, computer club, uh, chess club, math team. Um, so tons of tons of sites. Like for and if there's something that you're interested in and you want to do it, that can happen. I had a a student who was super into the Rubik's Cube. He's actually sort of nationally ranked. And so he got this Rubik's Cube competition at George School um, a few years ago. So that was that was really fun. So I, I could do a cube, but like just and lots of kids from all over came. And so that's something that you just and he did it, you know, on his own. And that's something that, that you could do. Um, so on the math science, uh, you know, side of things. Yeah, we have a great math team. Uh, the cool thing about a math team uh, and sort of math competitions in general is that it's, you know, they're certainly for people that are like good at and can do math, but they're also people who want to get better at math. It gives you great exposure to lots of sort of different puzzly type um, type problems. And so there's a, it's, yeah, it's a great group of kids. Um, uh, really, if you if you're interested in something, there's probably a teacher that would be game. Um, if you want to do like a linguist, computational linguistics poll, that could happen. So anyway. Are you volunteering? <laughs> yeah, I'm sort of, I sort of think it would be kind of cool. Um, but <laughs> Does anyway, any student want to talk about that involvement and how students get involved in, in clubs and activities? All right, Ben. Sure. So um, I'll just tell a quick little anecdote. I know we're running low on time, so I'll try to keep it short. But uh, my sophomore year, uh, me and a few friends were writing for the newspaper, and we thought it would be a fun idea to start like our own George School media sort of club. At first, we were going to make our own like satirical newspaper, but eventually it morphed into a podcast about school and, and school happenings and things like that. And we got the film teacher to sponsor us. So we used the film room uh, and all the mic equipment to set it up. And within a few months, we were on Spotify and Apple Podcasts and anywhere else that podcasts can be. And it was all made possible due to the support that we had from our club sponsor. And I think that's one of the best parts about George School Clubs is that the faculty members at George School are really invested in, in seeing the students do, you know, good work and helping them succeed. So yeah, that's just my story about uh, how I started a club and, and how it got done. So yeah. Thank you, Ben. I know we've had a few questions about the performing arts and opportunities to be engaged in theater activities. I know Hamilton just answered, yes, we have an orchestra for those who enjoy playing. Um, so thank you, Hamilton. But Sarah, can you tell us a little bit about opportunities for theater? Do people have to be experienced in theater? Can they try out? Can they take classes? How does that work? Yeah, absolutely. First of all, you don't need to be experienced at all. That's actually kind of the fun of it. Um, we have people from all over the world who have you know, never done it before and being able to use their perspectives and what they might have seen on stage, what they may not have, and bring that to the classroom. It's absolutely amazing. We have a theater class. Um, we have, you know, orchestra class. We have many different classes. So there's also the productions um, classes. That's what we call production class um, after school. So, you know, we have the technical side of things where you can do stage crew, you can do costumes, makeup, all that stuff. Or you can be on stage actually acting or student director. Really, you can be any part of the show because there's so many different pieces to put it all together. So really, there's an opportunity for every, anyone. There was even somebody, a student who was really interested in creating wigs, so he did that. Um, so there's really many, many opportunities. Um, and I know some people were interested about like the chorus and everything. There is actually a chorus um, that is a class at school, but there's also, you can do that outside of school. There's like clubs, there's also the community chorus. So there's really a lot of opportunities and you can always um, go to our theater department or really any of the arts departments and you can ask them, can we create this? And most likely you'll be able to do it. 
Thank you so much, Sarah. I'm watching the time, but I do want to, to throw this over to Polly. You may have noticed in the chat, she noted our independent science research. And I think that we would re be remiss if we didn't talk about that as an opportunity for additional learning for students. And after that, what I will do is I'll just address a few uh, points about the admission process and then tell you how to continue to connect with us. So Polly, over to you. Sure, so um, we hope that students will take chemistry, biology, physics, and maybe some upper level courses in science as well. But for students that are really interested in science, they can take an independent science research class. Um, and that class can happen uh, over the summer. It could happen at a local university. It could happen on the weekends. It could happen in the afternoons. It really depends on the student's schedule uh, and their interests. Um, and um, ideally, it might be a project that they do on campus, or it could be something that they do with a professor during the summertime at a local university. So it can take many, many different forms. But if, if, a, if a student's really interested in science, we hope that they can actually do some independent science research. So we would like to support that. Thank you so much, Polly. Um, I do encourage uh, folks to continue to po post questions into the Zoom. We will continue to answer those individually in the background, but we can also um, work to, to send you follow-up. Uh, but I, but I'm, I'm trying to be respectful of time, and I want to make sure that we get in some information about next steps in the process. For students who are, who are looking to apply to start for the fall of 2021, um, as you can imagine, a George School unfortunately is limited in, in the opportunities students have to come to campus. And right now, it's really limited to we don't have opportunities. Um, we will be reopening for, for school for students in just a few weeks. We'll be uh, bringing our borders back to campus. And we're being extremely careful with our health and safety protocols and, and making sure that we're doing everything that we can do to, to keep COVID. Um, at bay in our in our campus community. I, I do want to share something that I think reflects incredibly well upon our Quaker Foundation. George School is one of the very few boarding schools in the United States that continue to host international students through spring break and through the summer. Most of our international students did have to leave campus, whether it would be to find a last minute host family or to fly home. Um, George School felt it was important to give families the opportunity to, to keep their children at George School where it was safe, where they could avoid travel through airports, and where they could be taken care of by adults in the community that, that, that knew them, loved them, and, and trusted them. So the school community has rallied and we stayed open. Um, we're proud to say that we have kept our, our um, students safe. Nobody has contacted, contracted pretty much anything in the, in the time period that they've been here. Um, and, and that's leading to our decision at this point um, to really not allow admission visitors. So that means that for the foreseeable future, and we're hoping that that will change soon, but right now we are working on the assumption that we will have to conduct all of our admission interviews via Zoom um, or another platform. We want to reassure you that doing a Zoom interview is does not take away from the experience. It, it, it does not put you at a disadvantage if you, if you could only have an interview through a screen. Um, we can really connect with you. Many of our international students already only conduct Zoom interviews and, and they thrive here at George School. They get a good experience with George School. We're working on our structure to make sure that when you sign up for an interview, you'll also have an opportunity before the interview with the admission officer. And please know we really consider them more conversations than interviews. Uh, before you have that conversation with the admission officer, you'll have a chance to have a little bit of a chat with one of our admission ambassadors to help you to get some knowledge about George School, to help maybe hopefully break your nerves because it can be nervous. So we're going to continue to give you that opportunity to connect with, with one of our students so that you can ask those questions. Uh, we normally begin our interviews on October 1st. We may open those up a little bit earlier, but we really, realistically, we like to start them in October because we want to hear what your experience is like academically in the year in which you're applying. And if you started your interview now, you wouldn't have an experience as an eighth grader. 
you would only have your seventh grade experience. And so we wanna hear a little bit about how your school year is going. So please continue to watch the website for those opportunities. You'll be able to sign up for interviews and interview slots, and we will also reach out to you. The question has already also come up about what we will do with the SSAT. We know that um, SSA, SAO or the SSAT is not going to be offering um, testing centers in the same way. Um, we have not yet made our determination if we will go test optional. Uh, we at George School work with many, many peer schools in the area, other friend schools, other schools, and we want to make sure that we're all in line. Uh, we like to collaborate and, and coordinate with one another, and we want to make sure that the information that we do receive from the SSAT that we can find in a different way. So again, please continue to watch the website. Please continue to watch your email for notice from us, and we will let you know that process. We're going to outline it. We know it's a challenging year. We know it's a little bit of a different year. Please recognize that one of the things that we strive for within the admission office is openness, fairness, and flexibility. We know that every situation is unique. Every student is unique. And I can't say that I've ever worked here in a year where we keep these really strict, rigid guidelines that everyone has to follow to a T. We do our best to be flexible and to be and to understand. Um, so I do want to, to assure you um, on that. Rohan, do you want to add anything to that process? No, I think you've got it covered, Kim. Uh, we, we are certainly going to be mindful of just what's going on in the world around us and we'll certainly keep you up, updated. So keep an eye on your email. We'll be sending out communication to families that have expressed an interest through the inquiry form. And just as importantly, I can't stress enough how much fun it has been to offer daily information sessions. And you can go to the website to sign up for an information session. You can email us at admission at georgeschool.org. But basically, every day, Monday through Friday at 10.30 a.m., there's an admission officer and one of our student ambassadors. You'll see our student ambassadors that are here today um, online. And we provide, again, a general overview. But really, it's just an opportunity. Whatever questions you have, pose those questions. And, and so it's an opportunity either in a small group, sometimes we have two or three families signed up, sometimes it's just one. And you have an opportunity to have a small group session to ask those questions that, that are on your mind. Uh, these open houses that we're having are not the only way to connect with us. And we know that you likely have lots and lots of questions, so keep asking them. You can sign up for multiple open houses. You can email us as many questions as you need to. And oh, look, Kellyanne. Oh, Kellyanne is amazing. Kellyanne is another one of our admission officers, and she posted in the chat the link to the calendar to sign up for information sessions. So you can copy and paste that link, you can bookmark that link, and you can sign up for, for information sessions. And so that's a great way to connect. You can always reach us at admission uh, email, admission at georgeschool.org. Notice I'm not really giving you the phone number. It's because very few of us are actually on campus. I'm fortunate to live on campus and be able to be in my office, but our phones are not as, as staffed as regularly as our email. Um, so email is the preferred way to reach out to us. And if you have questions for faculty or if you have additional questions for students, you can email them to that admission email and, and we will forward them on. Uh, we do want to, I, I do want to, to wrap up by asking all of our panelists the same question. And I'm gonna ask for a brief response from everybody. And Sophia, I'm gonna ask you to type that into the chat. And the question is pretty simple. Uh, from the student and faculty perspective, if you are in the shoes of either a parent or a student applying at George School, what's the best advice that you can give somebody as they're considering the, the choice for their next step in either their education or their child's education? And I'm gonna um, pick on Sarah because I'm looking at her um, to, to ask, to answer that question first for me. Yeah, I guess what I would say is first of all, keep calm because I know for me, I was a nervous wreck. Um, so please keep calm. Everything happens for a reason. Um, you know, we have, you know, so many services here. We're able to help you with any questions, please. Because I know I was filled with so many questions. So, you know, no matter what, um, I would say simply, simply put, everything happens for a reason. And, you know, I wish the best for all of you. 
Thank you, Sarah. Martin, can I ask you that question? Um, just make sure whatever school you're thinking about going to is like you can see yourself um, excelling there and being successful and also that is a safe and environment for you and that you're able to grow. I think that's one of the most important things to make sure you're, you feel like you're in the right place. Thank you, Martin. Shelby, would you like to add to that? I'd say don't be afraid to ask questions. Um, there are so many people who are willing to answer them. Um, so, you know, just reach out and be bold. And Ben? Um, I guess I'd add just be active, like participate in all you can, uh, just to make sure that you're getting all the information from all the places that you're interested in. Just keep your eyes and ears open. And Sophia has added from afar to don't worry, be happy, and take risks. Sorry, Polly, would you like to add any, any advice for, for families as they're considering their next school? Um, sure, I would say to the, to the students, be learners, be engaged learners in the school where you are right now. If there's something that you love, just, just go for it. And as Sophia said, take risks. Uh, we learn from our mistakes, and there's nothing wrong with failing. That's that. That's actually how we grow. Ilya Beth? Oh, I took away the last part. I was going to say be risk takers. Um, we know that uh, considering boarding school education is daunting, and there's so many unknowns, but so many great things come from taking risks like this and 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 learning more about what could be a great opportunity for you. So ask questions, be risk takers, is my take. Thanks, Ilya Beth. Hamilton? Yeah, students uh, and others said it really well. I mean, it's useful, you know, you can sort of learn about yourself by considering how you might be in, in different places. Um, and boarding school is, is a really exciting place. Um, so I, uh, yeah, in, in thinking about it. It's, it's, it's a fun, fun process. Thanks, Hamilton and Kim. Do you have any advice for families? Sure, I would echo the, um, the advice to be risk takers. Find a place that, um, where you feel safe, but that isn't the safe option for yourself. Um, and I would also say use your voice and remember that you have to find the best school for you, not the best school according to some report or according to some statistic. It has to be the best fit for you. Thank you so much, Kim. And I'm gonna take a few minutes, just not a few minutes, a few moments, because I feel like it's important from an admission officer perspective to share that there's so much stress that's tied up with the admission process. And I think some of that stress is feeling like you have to be perfect, feeling like you have to fit a particular mold. I can tell you one, with 100% accuracy that the only thing that we are looking for in the admission process is that you can be who you are that you can express who you are, um, that there is no perfect, there's no one answer that we're looking for. If we, we're not looking for the class president who has straight A's, who um, is always the star of the show and the captain of a particular team. I mean, those people are great and we certainly have students like that, but you may be proud of being the world champion Pokemon player or having an interest in something that you might think, oh gosh, nobody's going to think this or it's just so crazy. We want to get to know who you are. Be yourself. Don't be afraid to show that you're not perfect because I sure as heck am not. And, and I don't know anybody who is. And those students who can reflect on themselves as who they are are the students who will thrive here at George School. Uh, if they're always looking to become their best selves at that moment. And Rohan, I'm gonna throw it to you to see if you have advice from an admission perspective. Those are some tough acts to follow, plenty of great advice. I would say, honestly, there are plenty of great schools out there and a lot of them are going to seem very similar. You know, rigorous academics, competitive athletics, great arts programs, beautiful facilities, sense of community. And so when you get a chance to really kick the tires, look under the hood, get to know the community for who they are, normally it would be in person would be my recommendation, but taking advantage of schools virtual opportunities, so whether they're info sessions, similar open houses, whatever it is, 
opportunities to connect with their faculty and staff and students and continue to ask those tough questions. Because when you find that right school and community for you and your family, that's when the students in the room are going to feel comfortable enough to continue to excel academically, comfortable enough to continue to pursue their passions, but also comfortable enough to, to try new things and uh, stretch themselves, see what they're capable of. Uh, because when you're looking for that right community, it's not just about the comfort, it's also about finding a place that's going to challenge you. So that challenge you socially, emotionally, academically, extracurricularly, so that when you cross that stage at the end of four years, you are leaving that community a better version of yourself than you were when you started. Thank you, Rohan. Well, I want to say thank you to all of our panelists, our faculty, our, our students, and all of you for joining us. We know that there's a little bit of Zoom fatigue happening, uh, both in terms of work, in terms of school, in terms of social. So thank you for taking an hour and change of your life and giving it to us via Zoom and for all of us, for all of you. And, and we really do look forward to the opportunity to connect again please don't hesitate to reach out. We really and truly look forward to getting to know you as individuals in the admission process and enjoy the rest of your summer. There's a lot of good weather, a lot of good times out there. And, and we wanna hear about it when we, when we have our admission conversation. And with that, we'll say good night. Thank you everybody.